All right, guys, it's like 2 a.m. the morning of the Ryzen 5000 CPU launch. I got my system ready to go. I got a whole bunch of benchmarks ready for the CPUs I'll be comparing it to. What I don't have is a Ryzen 5000 CPU. No, in order to get one of those on the day of launch, I need to drive 60 miles. to Micro Center to wait in line with all these awesome people. All right. This is my spot here at the end of this line for the next oh, five plus hours. Mission successful. Let's get this thing home and get it tested. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm CJ and it's been a long morning, but after a 120 mile round trip, waiting in line all night in the freezing cold at Micro Center, I'm back in the studio with a brand new Ryzen 5 5600X. Six core, 12 thread, 3.7 gigahertz base, 4.6 gigahertz max boost clock, central processing unit. And while the CPU acquisition mission was successful, the day's not done. As much as I just wanna crawl into bed, I still need to run about 40 benchmarks on this, get a bunch of charts compiled, edit this video and get it uploaded so you can see if this is the processor for you. Now, I know your notification tab was full of Zen 3 reviews this morning, but I'm confident none of those reviewers demonstrated the sheer effort and conviction to bring you, the viewer, the latest and most relevant content like I have today. So help me get this content out to the masses by hitting that like button and sharing it with everyone you know. Okay. Enough of my sleep-deprived ramblings. Let's just get down to business. And the first test of this 5600X is to get it installed in my system and make sure it's 100% drop-in compatible with my X570 motherboard, which it should be, but let's see. Okay, I guess I should give you a quick overview right now of the test system. So I will be installing the new Ryzen 5 5600X on my Asus Prime X570 Pro, which has installed 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz cast latency 16 memory and EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti and it'll be cooled by the Lian Li Galahad 240 millimeter AIO. All right, first things first, out with the Ryzen 7 3700X. And in with the Ryzen 5 5600X. Well, that's off to a bad start. So getting a CPU LED light error. Fans are ramped up to 100% still. Just some really quick troubleshooting. What happened was I just popped one of the memory modules loose when I was changing out the CPU. Popped that back into the place. It posted fine into my system BIOS. I have, you see the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X is installed, all 65 gigabytes of memory. I'm at 2133 megahertz right now on the memory. I'm just gonna come over here. The only setting I'm gonna put into my BIOS is I'm going to change to my DOCP settings for my 3200 megahertz memory. 
and then just save and reset. Okay, the CPU is installed and working, I assume. I need to update a few monitoring apps, but I can do that off camera as well as run all the productivity and gaming benchmarks. Like I said, I have close to 40 benchmarks to run, so I have hours of work to do, but for you, the charts will be right up. And oh, I did learn while I was troubleshooting the system that there was a new BIOS version released today for my Asus motherboard, but I'm still running the older BIOS released just a few weeks ago, which does have the Agesa 1.1.0.0 update. And I'll keep that one unless I run into any stability issues because I want to keep the system exactly how it was, BIOS driver software versions, when I benchmarked the other CPUs for a purely apples to apples comparison. Also, speaking of other CPUs, let's discuss the CPUs I'll be directly comparing the 5600X to. So I'm taking a slightly different angle on this review. Most reviewers are comparing the Zen 3 CPUs to the 10th gen Intel CPUs to determine if AMD really has taken the throne as king of gaming. My target audience is the current AMD Ryzen users who are trying to determine if they should upgrade from their current Ryzen CPU to this Ryzen 5 5600X. So the two CPUs I'm comparing this to are first its direct predecessor, the Ryzen 5 3600X and the Ryzen 7 3700X I just pulled from the system for a price point comparison as they can both be had for around $300. The second part of this review is that I'm not testing these CPUs at their boring out of the box stock settings. This motherboard has precision boost overdrive engaged by default and I'm leaving it engaged because, well, because my guess is if my target audience has one of these CPUs in their rig, they have at a minimum PBO on. If you then upgrade to the 5600X, you'll keep PBO on besides, I sat out in the cold all night to get the CPU. I'll test it any way I want, even if it's not standard practice. Anyway, rant over, let's get to those charts. We'll start the chart assault with CPU performance benchmarks, and we see that in V-Ray, the 5600X pulls past the 3600X by 27%, while only trailing the eight core 3700X by 3%. Margins are about the same in Cinebench R20 multi-core benchmark. However, we see 20% increase in the 5600X single core speed. Moving on to some production benchmarks. I use the Pugent system benchmark to test Photoshop, After Effects, and Premiere Pro, and we see significant gains in both Photoshop and After Effects with the 5600X while Premiere Pro still reaches peak efficiency with an 8-core CPU, however, the 5600X still keeps the margin within 5%. In our Blender renders, we again see more cores is better, but again we see the 5600X close that gap within 10% of the 3700X, while rendering the projects about 15% faster than the 3600X. Kind of more of the same for 7-zip compression and decompression. For our synthetic total system benchmark, starting with the Passmark CPU mark total scores, we again see the 5600X dominates the 3600X, while pulling neck and neck with the bigger 3700X. The PC Mark 10 suite tests the performance of common home computing and business tasks and software and is a blend of multi-core and single core workloads. However, it leans more towards the single core performance and this is evidence in the final scores. Finally, superposition is really a GPU benchmark. However, I heard that Zen 3 CPUs were underperforming in this test, so I ran it out of curiosity and it turns out to be True, I mean, barely, but the 3700X and the 3600X did both score higher than the 5600X. 
Finally, I ran just the physics slash CPU tests in both Firestrike and TimeSpy. While both tests have a balance of single core and multi core performance, Firestrike leans more single core performance, while TimeSpy leans more multi core. And the CPUs again performed in line with the previous test, with the 5600 greatly outperforming the 3600X. Moving on to the gaming benchmarks, I selected a cross section of games that are more CPU dependent, some more GPU dependent, and some balanced, some easy to run, and some more difficult. All games were run at 1080p high settings unless otherwise mentioned to put more work on the CPU. For those wondering why I added GPU dependent titles like Apex Legends, it's exactly to demonstrate that there are some games you can't really affect with a CPU upgrade. I'll just put the charts up now, feel free to pause and scroll, and I'll just pipe up when I need to point something out. And Modern Warfare is something I need to point out. I actually watched Nada from Text Testers review the 5600 while I was waiting in line for the CPU earlier, and she had problems with Warzone, the frame rate was significantly lower than expected, and there was a lot of choppy gameplay. Now, in my testing, the gameplay was smooth, I didn't have those issues, but you see there is definitely a problem with the frame rate as even the 3600 is significantly outperforming the 5600X. I really don't have an answer to this, but I'll follow up and see if there comes a resolution with future updates. The other thing to point out is the huge gains the 5600 gets in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I reran this one several times to confirm and it's a valid result. These are all to be expected and validate the IPC uplift of the 5600X. as well as these, with the exception of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I would expect to be more separated, and it would be, except I think I unintentionally ran all the benchmarks at very high settings, transferring a lot of the workload to the GPU. This one was just user error. And finally, we have to answer the question, can it run Crisis Remastered? And yes, it can. It can also run the AI in Civilization VI. These are recorded in turn time, so lower is better. Last chart to sum it all up is the average FPS for all 17 titles I tested. And the first thing that's notable is that the separation isn't as wide as you may have seen in other reviews. Now, this is for two main reasons. The first is I didn't cherry pick games that were just CPU heavy. And many reasons for that, but mostly because, well, people don't choose games they like based on which part of your gaming rig it leverages. It also significantly affects the most important numbers on all of these charts, and that's the cost per frame of these CPUs and Yes, the 3600X is the best price to performance processor on the list, but that's only because the price has been reduced to about $230. But I'd call the 5600X the winner here as it comes in at under the cost of the older 3700X. Now, the second main reason the margins are tighter than you might expect here is a guess on my part, but an educated guess, and I'm pretty sure it's due to Precision Boost Overdrive. Simply put, PBO boosts the CPU to its max frequency faster and longer, but still within the CPU's power and thermal limits. I have to do more testing, but I think the Zen 2 CPUs had a little more power and thermal headroom to boost for longer than the Zen 3 chip did. Again, that's just a guess from observing CPU stats in the overlay while gaming and the fact that the results from the 3700X and especially the 3600X 
were relatively higher than typical. Okay, the big question, would I recommend upgrading to the Ryzen 5 5600? Well, first from the 3700X, no. Whether you're a gamer or a content creator or do both, spending $300 to replace the 3700X just isn't worth it. As far as the 3600X, well, that's more complicated. For content creation, it may be a good option if you just have $300 to spend as you'll see some games. For just gaming, it really depends on the games you play. But I didn't see any gains big enough to justify the cost. And also keep in mind these results will scale with your GPU. If you're rocking an RX 580 or a GTX 1050, your CPU really doesn't matter. You're GPU bound in pretty much every modern game. I mean, no judgment, I'm just saying. <laughs> now, if you're building a new system and looking for a new CPU, then yes, this is a solid choice, which will pair well with say an RTX 3070, whenever those things are actually available, and maybe an AMD Radeon 6800, maybe we'll definitely be exploring that pairing soon so make sure you get subscribed if you're not already and remember to hit that like it really does help me out with the youtube algorithm but that is it for this one i need to go to bed now if you have any questions be sure to ask in the comments below and i'll be sure to answer them when i wake up okay good night